Matilda, because of her hardships with mean adults, is really sensitive to what that feels like. So how do you thrive despite all of that? You were born into a family that doesn't always appreciate you. But one day, things are going to be very different. If there is going to be some kind of confrontation, you're not going to win all of them. But you can win the internal battle of, I stood up for myself, I did what I knew was right. At least I know who I am and what I'm worth. No more Miss Nice Girl. She takes something that's literally born of trauma and turns it into her superpower. And my question for you watching, if this is your circumstance, is what is something that you're carrying right here that can become a positive? Hello and welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist, and I love movies. Joining me is Alan Seawright, a professional filmmaker who needs therapy, and Jono's third best friend. <laughs> As in you're third in line, or I've gone through that many best friends and I just keep burning. No, I'm the third one. <laughs> that still doesn't answer my question. I'm third. <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> this is why, also, I might add. <laughs> How do, This is the fastest we've ever derailed an episode. Yep, we did it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it. Let's keep the whole damn thing. We're going to be talking about Matilda today. I love that movie. This is a psychology of a hero. We're going to the Mara Wilson 90s classic. Oh, not the musical. Not the new musical. So we're going to be exploring thriving uh, despite negligence and abuse. And we get comments sometimes or emails sent to us. And one thing that keeps coming up over and over and over again is I'm currently in a home where there's emotional abuse or neglect or something going on. Yeah. It's not, I'm not at the, I'm out and now I need to heal. I'm in the thick of it. So how do you thrive despite all of that? And that is the meat of Matilda. There's a lot of fantastical, fun, silly things in this movie, but there is a really strong psycho-emotional core. Let's explore. Okay, I'm interested to learn about it. When she finished all the children's books, she started wandering around in search of something else. Mrs. Phelps, who had been watching her with fascination for the past few weeks, offered Matilda some valuable library information. You know you could have your very own library card, and then you could take books home. And you wouldn't have to walk here every day. You could take as many as you like. Oh my gosh, look at this library. It's a palace. So Matilda's strong young mind continued to grow. It's The Hobbit. Nurtured by the voices of all those authors. Danny DeVito's autobiography. Out into the world, like ships onto the sea. Oh, sailing. These books gave Matilda a hopeful and comforting message. You are not alone. Principle number one, find ways to escape your reality and connect with the human experience. Oh, is that what we're doing right now? <laughs> on our YouTube channel. Yes. Or with watching film, uh, watching movies. Yes. The connecting with the human experience part is vital because you can escape your reality and not find hope. Sure. You can escape your reality and not find strength or wisdom or insight that will serve you and help you and sustain you through the hardship. And, and I'm not saying cotton candy escapism isn't good or sure. that it doesn't serve you. I'm saying the great stories help you through your hardship. Yeah. I can see that. Have a marshmallow. Have another marshmallow, dip face. Dip face. Is that the kid from Jurassic Park? The one who is at the dig site? Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes Matilda longed for a friend, someone like the kind, courageous people in her books. It occurred to her that like talking dragons and princesses with hair long enough to climb, such people might exist only in storybooks. Hmm. But Matilda was about to discover that she could be her own friend. Whoa. That she had a kind of strength she wasn't even aware of. Principle number two, they state openly, mm -hmm. which is be a friend to yourself. Yeah. And Matilda does that marvelously. She cooks for herself. Mm -hmm. she, she goes and gets book for herself. She takes care of herself. But she also meets her own emotional needs. This is a really hard lesson to learn. And you see it on Mara Wilson's sweet little face. She's such a heartbreaking little actress. It is sad and it is lonely. And yet it is a crucial life skill that honestly, I want to phrase this right. People who come from happy homes often don't learn self-love until later because they get it elsewhere. Yeah. And so I'm not saying, 
Aren't you glad you're in an unhappy home? What I'm saying is there's a silver lining, which is you're learning a crucial life skill. Yeah. And you're learning it early. Hard life lessons, uh, you, you had them happen to you real quick. Yeah. The, the thing about this that's truly heartbreaking to me, though, is mm. that line from the, the narrator, which narration and voiceover, often a crutch, in this case... Super great. Part of it is it's delivered. It's Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. Yeah. It so Lorax has the same thing. Like, yes. He talks and you're like, okay. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, but the thing that's really heartbreaking is her assuming that friendship is a thing from storybooks. Yeah. Because she's never experienced it in real life. Back to what you're saying, though. I think a lot of you relate to my friends are in the books. They're in the movies. They're in the TV shows. Like These are the people that I connect with and relate to. And what we're going to... Hopefully on Discord or something. Yeah. <laughs> There's people out there on the interwebs. Well, and that's that's one of the great beauties of the internet culture that we're in now is that if you don't have friends in your immediate vicinity, you can find Yeah, there, there's a lot bad on the internet, but there's a lot that's wonderful, and that's one of it. You, find you can always find a community. Yeah. This video is sponsored by Day One Journal. I've actually used Day One for years. I started in 2019 to write down my thoughts and ideas as part of my own healing and therapy journey. That's really awesome. Thank you. Journaling can be a really helpful therapeutic practice. True. Through expressive writing and exploring your emotions and documenting the healing process, you can make your way through the hardest of times. It's true. I, for one, have a journal for personal stuff, separate ones for my fitness goals, and a gratitude journal. And I have really loved some of the premium features for my fitness journal. I take a daily picture. Yeah. It's a weekly picture. I also use the voice to text for my gratitude journal because I find it a lot easier to think out loud mm. and say what I'm grateful about as long as no one's there listening. To me. <laughs> I've been helping my dad capture his life story because he didn't keep a journal through his whole life. Oh, very so cool. now I'm interviewing him and I'm storing the audio files in day one. Dude, that's so awesome. And then we're having it built out and written out and then we're adding the pictures and I'm going to have books printed for all of my siblings. That is so cool. And similarly, maybe Matilda could have used day one to plot out her revenge against Mrs. Trudgebull. Or maybe to process her emotional trauma. That would have been a healthier way to handle that. So whether you want to start journaling to help in your healing journey. Or to preserve your memories. Organize your artistic ideas like I should do. Or to relieve stress, check out day one. Go to dayoneapp.com slash cinema therapy and use code cinema therapy for a two month free trial of day one premium. That's D-A-Y-O-N-E app.com slash cinema therapy. See why it's the number one journaling app out there. And then we could be journal buddies. Yay, journal buddies. I never read in this classroom, in this school. I am God. Fun fact, Pam Ferris, who plays Mrs. Trunchbull, also plays Aunt Marge She's in Harry Potter Aunt and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Yep. <laughs> and hats off for doing a role where you're hated by children everywhere. Over and over. How could she possibly have done it when she's sitting it. way over here? I'll be watching you. Each and every one. When you turn the corner. When you go to your little cubbies to get your smelly little coats. When you skip merrily to lunch. I'll be watching you. All of you. And especially you. So it was actually another child. It wasn't Matilda. Yep. But she doesn't rat the girl out because snitches get stitches. Wait for not telling. Best friends don't tell. <laughs> I mean, I joked snitches get stitches, but better said when you find good people, show them kindness and loyalty. And Matilda is actually a bit of a guidebook for how to make friends. Mm -hmm. It's, yes, kindness and loyalty, but also showing interest and being supportive. And not everybody's going to respond to it, but when you find the right people, they're going to come to you like... Moths to the flame, yeah. which may not be a great analogy, but there it is. <laughs> Your friendship will eat them up, which is why I'm on my third best friend. Yeah, well, and Matilda has already gone from thinking friends are only from storybooks to best friends. Yeah. Right, best friends don't tell. You wanted cake, you got cake. Now eat it. 
Oh man. You know, <laughs> Danny DeVito has played circus performers and stuff before, and his direction has like a... It's got a very, almost Tim burton Tim, circus vibe. Yes! Yeah. Especially like the music and everything, and just, Oh. So Trunchbull's punishing this kid for stealing her cake, but... Yeah, this is... This really feels like Danny Elfman, but it's one of the Newmans. I can't remember which one, because there's nine of them, and they're all amazingly talented composers. Thomas or Randy? Without a doubt. It's David. Da or David Newman, yeah. Oh, you can do it, buddy. Come on. Well, she looks around, is nobody gonna... It's real bad. Give up. <laughs> you can do it, Brucey! You can do it, Bruce! Yeah, you can do it! Go, Bruce! Now, what makes this such an act of courage is Trunchbull is abusive and awful, and the kids face severe retribution for defying her. Yeah. <laughs> That's me at Applebee's on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd does the same thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then the server does that to you? <laughs> Once or twice. The entire assembly will stay five hours after school and copy from the dictionary. Any children who object will go straight into the chokey together. I love cartoonish over the top, like insane stuff happening to kids yeah. because that's what it feels like to be a kid. Like when you're a kid and you watch movies like this, you're like, yeah, that's what it's like. Yeah. This is, this is my teacher. This is my this principal. Is, this is what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> you watch it now as an adult and you're like, she just broke that thing over his head. I did not see that coming. So this comes to one of my favorite themes, which is Matilda, because of her hardships with mean adults, Mm. is really sensitive to what that feels like. And so when she sees this kid struggling and the whole school is just going to kind of witness it, sadly, yeah. she decides to give him what she always wanted, which was encouragement and support. Mm -hmm. And so when you give others encouragement and support and compassion, you grow the group of people who will give you encouragement, support, and compassion. The meanness and grossness and horribleness of Trunchbull is incredible. And if you'd like to see an entire episode about it, go to our Patreon. <laughs> we've got a, That's right. We've got a villain therapy on Trunchbull. What advice would I give her in counseling? How do you counsel the Trunchbull? If you want to find out, go to our Patreon. And there's that whole thing. There's a longer extended director's cut version of this episode. And uh, many other also things. They made it out. I love that she wears the weight training belt. <laughs> Feel my heart. Weren't you the most scared you've ever been in your whole life? Come on, let's go. She shouldn't be allowed to treat people like that. Somebody's got to teach her a lesson. I know. We'll wait until she leaves again. Then we'll go get your dog. What? Just kidding. <laughs> Come here. So we're gonna teach her a lesson. Tilda, promise me you will never go back in that house again. I promise. So this is where maybe we talk about the messaging of the film? Yeah, um... <laughs> is giving someone a taste of their own medicine... Mm-hmm. Good response to this heroic. type of abuse. Is that heroic? It's certainly satisfying to watch. Can oh we at boy, least is it? Yeah, acknowledge that. It's super fun. Sometimes we enjoy these types of stories because we want the satisfaction of that experience. Well, we don't do that in real life because it's kind of horrible. Yes, because <laughs> Matilda, as loving and as sweet as she is, she's kind of got a nasty streak in her. Mm -hmm. No more, Miss Nice Girl. 
And some of you watching say, well, yeah, it's adults abusing children and they deserve to be punished. And okay. I mean, listen, <laughs> if the punishment is a fake haunting, yeah, I'm, I'm probably. Less, I'm less concerned for the adult characters and what they deserve because yeah, Trunchbull absolutely deserves everything that's coming to her. Yes. And also she's a murderer. Like they even stick that in there. So it's really right. justified yeah. like anything that happens to her. I'm more concerned about what it would do to a person in real life to spend their time in retaliation mm. and to spend their time because it's not justice, it's revenge, right? Ew. It's not holding people accountable. It's not causing them to face consequences. It's just, they hurt me, so I'm going to hurt them. They humiliated me, so I'm going to humiliate them. And I, I don't want to make a big deal out of this. This is just, if I'm watching something like this with my kids, we talk about movies versus reality. And sometimes we watch movies because it would feel satisfying to do an eye for an eye. It sure, would. yeah. But what does that do for me in real life, right? So sometimes we get it through our art and entertainment so we can just say, I enjoy a good revenge story, but that's not who I'm going to become. Yeah, John Wick is not a template for real life actions to take. Right. <laughs> it is a fun template for action to watch. Right, yes. And it's cathartic for that reason, yes. right? Because it's fun to watch fictional people get shot up for wronging you. In real life, no. No. No es bueno. No. You want a war? Or do you want to just... Give me a gun. Having power isn't nearly as important as what you choose to do with it. And what Matilda had in mind was nothing short of heroic. <laughs> she is gonna rescue the doll. Miss Honey's childhood doll. Trunchbull. Spoiler alert, but Trunchbull killed Honey's mom and took the house. Trunchbull is Honey's aunt. Uh -huh. So Matilda is recovering things from Honey that she lost as a child, starting with this doll. But floating dolls are never not scary, no matter the context. Even in that, where it's really sweet, it's scary. Yeah. But now she's convincing Trunchbull that her house is haunted. And honestly, this type of stuff I can get behind, even in real life. Like, freak somebody out. If who's you can been... convince someone that their house is haunted, you probably should. <laughs> Again, not a licensed therapist. <laughs> Curiously, her telekinesis, her superpower, is triggered by trauma. Like, that's what brings it on. It's because of how her parents and her brother treat her that she discovers it. And later on, she's trying to access it, and she can't, so she says to her dad, Yell at me, okay? The stuff that he yells is so, like, goofy and off the wall. Yeah. It's so much fun. <laughs> Yell at you! I'll come in there and pound your miserable hide! Yeah, but she takes something that's literally born of trauma and turns it into her superpower. And my question for you watching, if this is your circumstance, is... What is something that you're carrying right here that can become a positive, right? It could be you've got a lot of anger. And so you, it becomes your superpower that later on you're going to stand up for the rights of others. Or you're going to turn that anger into your, you know, stereotypical, you might become a boxer, right? Or, or something where you, you use that in something powerful. Or, or righteous anger of standing up for the cause and, and against these sorts of things. Yeah. Or maybe your suffering, like Matilda, tunes you into the suffering of other people and you show them compassion and you provide comfort for one another. What does this look like for you? How can this experience become your superpower? Which is interesting because in the mythology of superheroes, most of them are born out of born trauma. Born out of trauma, yeah. yeah. And Matilda is a diminutive superhero. She oh, is. she's an X-Men, yeah. Yeah, which is honestly, that's the sequel I want to see. <laughs> Matilda's joining up with the X-Men? Yeah, like she rolls into Xavier's school from here and like that's her next stop. So what happened to me now? That's why I'm here, actually. She and Dark Phoenix can go at it. Oh, somebody write that fanfic. Screw fanfic, write that comic book. I want to read it. Yell at me, okay? I'll come in there and pound your miserable hide. She found a small cottage. She rented it from this lovely rhubarb farmer for just $50 a month. And she covered it in honeysuckle, and she planted hundreds of wildflowers, and she moved out of her wicked aunt's house, and she finally got her freedom. Good for her. Do you know why I told you this? No. 
You were born into a family that doesn't always appreciate you. But one day, things are going to be very different. Should we go inside and have tea and cookies? Yes, please. <laughs> the principle is, it gets better. You've got to hold on for better days. Yeah. And accept kindness from trustworthy people. And that can be a hard mm. thing to do because you've been hurt so often. Or when people are kind to you, you don't believe it because you're told you're worthless. Yeah. And so actually letting that in and internalizing it can sustain you during this time. One well, of the most difficult thing is when you've accepted kindness from an untrustworthy person and it turns out the, the kindness was the lure. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. I, you know, we've all been burned that way before. And a lot of times people are kind and then, you know, their affection wanes or they they get busy or whatever. And so the things that we want from a person are not the things that they want to give. And, you know, that's, that's nobody's fault. That's yeah. just yeah. part of life. But most people have also been burned by someone who used kindness to lure you in and then hurt you. It can be tough to accept kindness from people yeah. when you've been hurt a lot. What is the advice there? How do you know or do you just kind of... My sort of MO was just blindly stumble. <laughs> was that smart? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was human. I, I, think you, I think you give trust in degrees as people show that they deserve it. Oh, that's valid. Instead of just like giving it all at once. I think I blindly stumbled into that after <laughs> many years. Yeah, after enough times. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Again, these crazy camera angles. They just make it look like a live action And she cartoon. looks right at camera and... Now this, I don't know how they did the compositing on this. I suspect it was just classic. I don't know if that was digitally composited or not. I love that Miss Honey is like, please don't throw him. No, and then here she's like, go ahead. And yeah. <laughs> Give her the twirl. child. Just murder all children. <laughs> you find strength for standing up for others and for yourself. Right before this clip, Miss Honey stands up to a trunch bowl right. and says, I am not seven years old anymore, Aunt Trunchbull. You can't treat me this way. Right? And so that's, I, I like that Matilda and Miss Honey kind of tag team stepping into their power at the mm -hmm. same time. And then, given that Trunchbull murdered Miss Honey's parents, the the globe thing isn't too too much. No, it's or getting less. pelted with a bunch of food. Yeah, that's well within the bounds. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to be careful with this in real life because most of us don't have telekinesis. And a lot of times, if you stand up, like you can stand up and get slapped down so hard that you never stand up again. Right. You know, for yourself or for other people. It's about picking your battles and knowing what it looks like. That said, having a backbone for yourself and for others and using your best judgment as to when and how can help you to have a voice. And even if the person you're standing up to doesn't respect it, it gives you power that you did it. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. If there is going to be some kind of confrontation, you're not going to win all of them. Yeah. You're going to win every confrontation, but you can win the internal battle of I stood up for myself I did what I knew was right. Yeah. And even if externally it didn't go well, at least I know who I am and what I'm worth. Now, Alan, it's been several months since I've mentioned Man's Search for Meaning. Ding, ding, ding! There we go, folks. But it's time to reference it again, because there are, I, I want to be clear. There are people that if you stand up to them, you are putting yourself not only at risk, but sometimes it's a certainty. In danger, yeah. You're putting yourself in danger. We are not saying Don't stand up for yourself and put yourself in danger. No, no, no. 
Sometimes where you stand up for yourself is here and here. In Man's Search for Meaning, the Nazi guards would kill the Jewish prisoners who defied them or stood up to them. Right. And so sometimes if you're trying to survive, standing up means a person tells you you're worthless and in your mind and heart you say that's not true. Yeah, and outwardly you say, okay. <laughs> yeah, and you're just holding on till you can get out. Yeah. And a lot of times that's where you find your voice is internally, that's the shield. Mm -hmm. They can rage and they can hate and they can be nasty and you can say... I am not receiving this input about my character from a trunch bowl. Mouth breather. They don't get to tell me what my worth is. They're not a good judge of character and I refuse to accept it. And that's how you stand up for yourself in those situations. But if you have telekinesis, yeah, give them hell. We're gonna do it. We're doing it. So until next time. Get in the car, Melinda. Matilda. Whatever. And watch movies. We want to thank our patrons for supporting the channel and basking in seriously a treasure trove of bonus content that we create just for you. Folks like Alex, Connor Finn, <laughs> Tyler Shepard, Nathan Lewandowski, and Lucy Schwartz. Join our Patreon and become my fourth best friend. The next one. Yeah, or dethrone this one. Two have already died. <laughs> oh gosh, well that settles what you meant by the question, oh my gosh. Glad you stuck around, huh? I'm like a black widow of friends. <laughs> I just like keep making friends and killing them off. Sheesh.